We're now going to continue with the measurement section, but we're going to look at the spectrum measurements. So we're going to be using the same signal that we used in the scope YT mode, which is a 16 megahertz clock, but we're going to make some measurements in the spectrum display. So I'll change the acquisition to spectrum, and now we're in a spectrum display where we're displaying amplitude against frequency. So in this particular uh, display, we're going from DC up to 10 megahertz. It is possible to increase the bandwidth up to 350 megahertz, so now we're displaying up to 350 megahertz, which is the full analog bandwidth of the instrument. For my particular signal, I'm going to select uh, 78 megahertz, so I can look at the fundamental and the third harmonic. So we could measure the frequency uh, manually with a cursor now we can just position a manual cursor on a component and measure directly the frequency so here we see the 16 megahertz fundamental but in the spectrum mode now we can go and look at the next largest component which would be the uh, third harmonic and measure the frequency of the uh, third harmonic which will be uh, uh, 48 megahertz so it's possible to uh, measure a lot more of the frequency content of a signal in the spectrum display. We can perform these sort of measurements automatically by again using the measurements facility. So in the measurements now we have the spectrum measurements so we're measuring frequencies, uh, average uh, amplitude power, total power, uh, harmonic distortion, uh, spurious free dynamic range, uh, synad measurements, signal to noise, and intermod distortions. So if we wanted to measure the uh, frequency again of this particular signal, uh, measure it at the ruler, say, okay. So here now we're doing an automatic measurement uh, of the uh, fundamental frequency, the 16 megahertz. <coughs> Similarly, we can do uh, amplitude type measurements. So we could again use a, a cursor to make a measurement on the amplitude. I'll put a second cursor onto the uh, third harmonic there. So we're seeing that the uh, the fundamental had an amplitude of minus 11 dB micro, or the th third harmonic was down at minus 24. So we're seeing a difference of minus uh, of 12 dB. In the options menu, we can actually change the units of the vertical display. So I'm going to change them here to uh, dBm. So now we're measuring in dBms. So again, we're measuring directly in dBm. It is possible, again, to use a measurement to measure this uh, difference in amplitude directly. So again, we select the measurements. So here we see all the uh, different measurements available. So we're going to select, uh, for this second measurement, the spurious free dynamic range. I'll select it across the whole trace and say OK. So now I'll delete the uh, first measurement. So now we're measuring the difference. It's automatically found the fundamental at minus 12 and then looked for the next highest component, which indeed will be the uh, third harmonic, which we know should be 12 dBs below it. And if we look at the measurement, in fact, it has measured automatically the 12 dB. So it's automatic looking for all the spurious components below the fundamental. Finally, under the uh, when we add measurements, there are more options available under the advanced menu. So we can actually apply filters to the stats measurements and if we're doing any harmonic type measurements we can actually select which harmonics we do measurements over.